Hi, good evening. Um, we're going to be in conversation with TV Ram Prasad, um, who is um, presenting um, Ode to PSN. Uh, hi, Radhika. Um, that will premiere on Shali tomorrow. Um, just waiting for him to join. So do please stay on. And uh, um, just waiting for him to join. If you've not bought your tickets yet, please head to the link in Alap's bio and please do get yourself um, a ticket. Uh, this is a very special concert that also coincides with um, P.S. Narayana Swami's first death anniversary. Um, so I think it's also a very, um, you know, an emotional moment for his um, guru, I mean for his uh, disciple. Just give me a minute. I don't see TBR sir here yet. But I suppose he will join any time now. So I hope you all had a fantastic um, Saraswati Puja. Those who, are, those who are celebrating. Or those who are not. I hope you had a good holiday. And rested and caught up on sleep. Ah. I wonder why he has not joined yet. Sorry, sorry. Yes, he's here, so I'm sending him an invite to join. He's going to be here in a in a jiffy. Hi, Akila. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, good welcome. Yeah, nice to see you. And uh, is this today's color for Navratri? <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you also to be dressed in pink. <laughs> I don't have a pink kurta uh, <laughs> or a pink shirt. I, I, should, I should have one. told you. Actually, I should have. We should have color coordinated this. <laughs> but. Um, uh, but thank you so much. I mean, uh, the last um, couple of months that we have been, um, you know, planning this concert and um, uh, everything leading up to it has truly been special for us because uh, it has been for us also the possibility of not just, um, you know, getting to know the, the P.S. Narayana Swami Bani, um, thanks to the fantastic website that I know that you and a host of students have worked on, but also the possibility to get to know you as an artist which otherwise we may not have, you know, in that, you know, sometimes because when you curate a concert, you're constantly talking to them, you're getting insights on it. So it has been a very, very interesting month, uh, month, month and a half for us. Uh, thank you so much. For those who are just... Likewise, it has been, it, it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure uh, working with your team, with you thank and you. sharing thank whatever you. I could, uh, whatever I could do from my side. It has been definitely a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, I'm just going to quickly just say that Ode to PSN coincides with uh, legendary uh, maestro uh, Padma Bhushan P.S. Narayana Swami's death anniversary. And it's a very, very special offering uh, by one of his senior most disciples. Um, and that's why it's called Ode to PSN, literally just that. Um, uh, this concept was curated jointly, um, you know, by uh, TV Ram Prasadji and Alap. And really, it was, it's an attempt to allow listeners the possibility of understanding and appreciating not just the musicality of a maestro through the lens of his uh, Sishya, but also to recognize the importance of a Bani and how culture is really, you know, transmitted, transferred from one, um, from a guru to a student, from one generation to another. Um, so we're really so honored uh, to have uh, TV Ram Prasadji do this for us. Um, for those who don't know, I'm also going to take a moment to formally introduce um, him to you. I know that bios are uh, can always be put in Instagram captions and stuff. But sometimes when we, for people who might listen to this later, 
or when we upload it on YouTube. I think it's important. So I'm just going to take a moment to introduce TV Ram Prasad Ji. So TV Ram Prasad is a composer, practicing scholar, master, musical spokesperson, and someone who is devoted to the in-depth practice, performance, and transmission of Carnatic music. With a majestic voice, panoramic mm -hmm. range of vocal capabilities, deep understanding of the vast range of repertoire, he's um, undoubtedly one of the most respected musicians uh, in the Carnatic music, um, uh, you know, um, repertoire. He's known to create profound musical experiences with non-compromising adherence to the core traditional aspects while rendering unbounded manodharma explorations with exemplary sensitivity. And we're going to be talking about this as well, about his adherence to tradition, about um, improvisation, and about sensitivity, all of which are also hallmarks of the PSN Bani. His musical training was initiated by Mahalakshmi Natarajan in Mumbai and Sharada Satyanarayana. Uh, he carries forward and beyond a rich lineage of his gurus, Padma Bhushan P.S. Narayana Swami, Sangeeta Kala Acharyas S. Rajam, TV Gopalakrishnan, and R.R. Keshav Murthy. Uh, he is, of course, an A-grade All India Radio artist, and his programs have been broadcasted across radio and television in state, zonal, national networks over the past 25 years. He also has, um, you know, a lot of things that he does at, at, to sort of um, impact um, uh, the grassroots level, and we will talk to him about that as well. But without much ado now, I'm going to first please start off by asking you, this is called Ode to PSN. And like I said, it coincides with um, his um, uh, first death anniversary. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about how do you feel? I um, mean, a year has gone by, um, you know, and um, I'm curious also how, um, when, and how often do you think of your guru? Yeah, wonderful question. In fact, um, yes, it coincides with his first death anniversary, which is on 16th of October. That's right. And I'm so happy that uh, the concert uh, on Ala uh, platform, uh, which Ale is going to be uh, premiered tomorrow, which is a Vijay Dashmi. So it's my humble Vijay Dashmi offering to my... Absolutely. Guru. <laughs> it's a wonderful coincidence. We didn't even know um, this, right? We didn't know that it was Vijay Dashmi when we <laughs> planned this. Yeah. So, um, coming to your question, there is no uh, day when I don't uh, think of my guru. In the sense, um, I am not a very religious person in the sense, um, uh, ritualistic in that way, doing a puja every day or, uh, I mean, I have my own way of uh, prayer and uh, so I have my own altar in my room, uh, which is uh, very simple. My gurus, um, uh, Rajam, S. Rajam sir, P. S. Narayan Swami, my father, uh, Vyasarao, and Satya Sai Baba. So this is my altar and every time, every day when I come down to my room to do my classes or practice, they are the, they are the gods who I pray to. So that is, that is my ritual every day. So there is no one day where I don't uh, think uh, about. I mean, think about them because that is the first thing I do in the day. I mean, uh, think about them when I practice definitely what they have told me, what uh, we have experienced together, all those uh, uh, imagery keeps happening in the mind. So yeah, there is, they are always constantly with us. Yeah. The gurus. I think um, <laughs> uh, that's the beauty of a guru, right? They don't just only teach you music, but they also teach you a way of life, right? True, 100%. 100%. Right? Uh, they have taught me how to be a good man, basically. I mean, how to how to lead us? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, li life which has simplicity, which has uh, total submission. I mean, uh, uh, they were great people who lived very very simply. So that's how they just taught us to do that. That is that's the greatest life lesson I think I've learned from my gurus. Right. Um, so when you learned, uh, so was it a more like a, you know a, like a gurukulam sort of thing? Did you spend a lot of time with your guru? Or was it more like you went to classes and stuff? Like when I say you learned a way of life, obviously it means you spend quality time with your guru, correct? Yes. yes. So uh, talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. I never did a gurukula vasam with any of the gurus. I right. generally used to go for classes and come back. Right. Um, but um, I used to spend a lot of time with them. For example, with Rajam sir, um, um, 
I used to uh, be be with him, and he used to constantly tell stories of uh, uh, if there's a composition, he will spend so much more time explaining the stories beyond the behind that uh, seeing the Puranas, the the I mean whatever uh, episodes are depicted in a composition, because he's so well read and he's so he I mean the sharing continuous sharing. I we sit there and uh, sometimes I just. be around when he is painting so uh, whenever he wants to go out i'm some sometimes yeah, i'm there so yeah. similarly with psn sir there were so many occasions we used to go for together for uh, uh, students concerts he loves to go to all the students concerts, students concerts. so i had a car and i was uh, always i mean uh, ready to uh, drive, him to, to drive him around we used to go to the concert we used to come back to conversations when when we drive when like come coming back the time spent with him inside the house during the evenings students used to get together we all sing he'll be sit sit in the chair all of us uh, sitting there male students we'll be singing uh, uh, continuously there was no uh, end to that so uh, this was just to be a daily ritual so there are yeah. so many occasions we got to see him closely in fact i drove him to when when he got uh, the padma bhushan award uh, there was a felicitation in his village in koneri rajpur so i uh, drove because there was a concert of his where i sang behind him and yeah. then there was my concert also on the same day so uh, we went together his wife me there was so many beautiful moments beautiful moments of sharing so this is how, this is how we spent time with him and got got to imbibe those wonderful values yeah absolutely It's interesting you you use the word in the beginning of our conversation you said you're not a ritualistic person right mm -hmm. but you also said that you know how uh, practicing was like a daily ritual so i remember mm -hmm. having this conversation with vishnu i think he's also logged into this conversation and it was about um, silence and sadhana you know mm -hmm. and um, you know uh, i i i want to just focus a little bit on um, uh, how practice was a, a daily ritual right mm -hmm. and um, um how does um, how, what is the what is the importance of sadhana and how does uh, i mean when we when we say ritual we often associate it in the context of like tradition we associate it with like you know puja that sort of a thing right but ritual is also like like just the, the idea of sticking with the habit or uh, sticking with process doing something over and over again sadhana itself rigor mm -hmm. right so i want you to talk a little bit about um the whole idea of this daily ritual that you imbibe from uh, psn sir which is about about the importance of sadhana itself yes because uh, uh i mean uh, they were they went through so much of their especially psn sir he did gurukula vasam and the story says to say of how much they practiced that inspired us to definitely first of all i uh, mean make sure that we practiced and the content which is to receive i mean when we go there maybe on a day uh, i mean there will be one song which is taught or maybe a couple of songs which are going to be taught and then if we go next day we we had to make sure that we were on top of all that be, before we are able to receive something else mm -hmm. so the and there was a infectious uh, sort of uh, 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 camaraderie between uh, all the students so each one is a brilliant student and each one we gather there we practice we get ideas we get inspired so we go back so the practice was something which was very joyful we used to do it not as a ritual per se but it is something which we felt that we needed to do we we used to do it so that we could be sort of moving up the steps of uh, yeah. i mean whatever uh, Uh, excellence and we, because we yeah. really wanted to sort of get a good grip of the music which we are actually receiving what we are receiving we are receiving such rich content we had to be practicing to be able to keep up with that right um i'm also thinking about you you talked about like uh, you know sitting with a uh, student i mean with your fellow uh, colleagues and and you know uh, like practicing mm -hmm. music and i'm thinking also about how like um, you received music like almost like it was individual but it was shared in a sort of a collective environment right mm -hmm. and each one took away something but you also together like when you say students of psn then there there is a cert certain collective energy 
right having mm-hmm. imbibed from the same person but each of you mm-hmm. obviously has uh, gone on to make a mark of your own and has sort of cultivated a unique identity and a voice of your own right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i want you to talk a little bit about um, how does a student do that how does a student who learns from the same guru uh, manage to actually um uh, you know imbibe those qualities but also go on to um you know um find their own voice so to speak very interesting question in fact um, uh recently one of my good friends um, eric kavo sunil eric kavo sunil is a wonderful mridangist oh. in kerala okay. he wrote a book called resounding mridangam it's a wonderful book book and um, he had given a very interesting dimension to this concept of bani and uh, uh, since i anyway these are things which i also echo in my mind but i'd like to share this because it's very beautiful mm. now what he says is that bani is like a big alad maram like a big uh, banyan tree right bani yeah and within the bani there are a lot of schools the students who learn from the uh, teacher there are a mm. lot of schools mm. within the bani correct and what happens he say i mean uh, in the, uh, this is very interesting so basically a uh, artist i mean each one the school is by the students who learn from yeah. the, 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 the from yeah the band. and uh, ultimately they are artists so they also have their own uh, influences from other banis like they may they may had might have learned uh, from some other guru some uh, nuance or they yeah. follow some other uh, practices and they enjoy that try to imbibe that within their own self right. they have their own innovations so each each artist is different so over a period of time the style that is he, that he says is a style so the style of the artist so each artist has his own style mm. and over a period of time when that style gets i mean sort of uh, 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 polished and uh, sing and bust that yeah. really really it starts blossoming that's the point when that grows into another bani i mean right. so it's very nice the uh, thing so in this context i'd like to say that yes um uh, all of us students of ps narayan swami were very very fortunate in fact it is very important for a student to actually be learning from a particular sort of systematic bani i for it is a sort of a uh, thing where there is a i would say for example a bani has a system in the in place it has hmm. a dignity hmm. there is purity there is right. um uh, i mean uh, there is a structure there is a framework, framework. so yeah. when a student starts learning and he wants to advance he it's all of us were exposed all of us i mean for example uh, we had uh, so many of the uh, abhishek raguram balamurli krishna ranjani gayatri uh gayatri venkatraguan uh, bharati ram supan amrita murli uh, so many vishnu vishnu dev bharat sundar yeah. i may be missing out names but i'm just telling you yeah, there yeah. was so many so many uh, as murli uh, cr vaidyanathan right so each one started off in this bani so what what we got from this was we got a solid grounding we got a solid mm-hmm. foundation, foundation in this particular in, in this particular uh, Uh, i mean a uh, system of music mm. we all were exposed to a huge uh, sing of uh, krutis and ragas so basically uh, the entire plethora of ragas of krutis we got a huge palette to work work on that was what was gifted to us by this bani right. from there each one of us and there was a structure that for to even if you want to handle a raga there was a method there's a tradition which the bani followed yeah. so yeah. basically we had something to actually keep us grounded and understand yeah. that this is right that is uh, this works correct. that doesn't work correct from there each one of us Fly. have taken it further because each one of us is a different person right so no two people are same so each one has their own influences their own attitudes their own perceptions and this actually molds our music in uh, in so many ways so each one i think now if you listen to each one of them though they come from the same in the vast umbrella yes definitely they are uh, each one is different each one of the right. student i mentioned yes. right 
absolutely i i'm just curious that you know um um just in the context of bani also because you know um alap has a fairly large following of dancers i'm curious to know that um, you know when we say bani uh, uh, is bani in the context of dance and music are they different if at all or is it the same um yeah see basically there are lot of uh, uh, styles or schools of uh, or whatever uh, banis like for example right. tanjavur tanjavur the pannallur yeah. uh, sindhavur uh, style kalakshetra right. style so mysore uh, style right. so i don't know what to uh, i mean uh, one thing is yes definitely a practitioner needs to be initiated in into any of these things uh, into, right. into 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 any of the banis but over a period of time i think bani is sticking to a bani and telling that okay i will definitely only do be restricted to this that may not be good over a period of time the artist should blossom should have his own voice should have his own ideas should actually blo- come out and be himself not be stuck or sort of uh, curtailed or restricted by yeah. any by the, bani yeah. and such Yeah. So that way, I think yes, definitely there are banis in dance in music. Right. Students right. are, resident, but uh, I think ultimately there is a there is something which is good dance, good good music. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so if yeah. we need to see what is what is good and follow that good, right. there is only one right. way to follow is to go towards that good. So Absolutely. I think that's very important. Yeah. Right. um i want to ask you also a little bit about you know in one of the uh, mini documentaries that you shared with us that we shared on alap you talked about mm-hmm. how psn's bani is you used three words and you said gentle unhurried and soul stirring um you know um i and from the music that we have heard of you from many years and now even now as well you have made no uh, you know pretensions about uh, being completely um, a stickler with tradition right i want to ask you a little bit about um, you know everybody talks about innovation and tradition right so um, do you think firstly is that possible like is it possible is there enough ample scope for you to play around and also how what can you do to sort of ensure the tradition remains um, relevant to a very very um, rapidly changing um, audience mm-hmm. yeah see basically when you talk about tradition tradition is something which is in constant flux i would say it is there is a constant change what was tradition 100 years ago is yeah, not course. what is tradition today sure, so yeah. tradition definitely there is going to be uh, uh, i mean changes which the propagator of the tradition mm-hmm. brings in now there uh, i mean um, suppose i am upholding a tradition there is my own person persona which comes into that uh, practice which i am using and i propagate it in a manner which, where it is actually uh, i mean i'm it's not that i'm changing the uh, entire recipe see when i am talking about being traditional i am following most of the tenets of what the tradition says correct in fact i am not run i'm not going away from that i am adhering to most of the tenets which which are there but there is something which there is there in me and i put into that and that i mean that also is traditional there is no way that that's not tradition for example i'll give you to a uh, with two of my gurus mm. rajam sir s rajam sir was mm-hmm. supposed to be uh, the student of ambi dikshitar mm-hmm. now ambi dikshitar is a direct descendant of muthu swami dikshitar Right. and uh, the patantaram of the the uh, the way they learned the muthu swami dikshitar songs was supposed to be very very authentic right now when rajam sir teach us muthu swami dikshitar to this there were many occasions he put some sangatis of his own there was some of something yeah. from his own Addition. in that yeah. it's not that he just taught what was there in the yeah. uh, i mean notations which he yeah. received from his guru correct so there was his own thing now that doesn't mean that there is any dilution of the tradition hmm see what he did was extremely sophisticated very traditional tradition was upheld but there was some some of his uh, uh, thing in uh, yeah. rajam sir's uh, own persona in that composition imagination yeah. yeah 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 
again when you talk about ps narayan swami sir ps and sir uh, ps ps narayan swami and tmt tm tyagaraj uh, both yeah. were guru bhais which you could right. say and they were uh, disciples of semangudi shrinivas sir right that was a big uh, umbrella i mean yeah. banyan tree and these two were very very uh, i mean Fortunate. eminent disciples yeah. of yeah. Uh, and they were brilliant musicians so there were so many compositions they were great tunesmiths so there were so many comp- traditional compositions where they have done a little retuning re sing so that it, mm. it that they could enrich the composition mm. so in no way yeah. they diluted that the composition the mm. the tradition was not diluted mm. there but actually those compositions were actually it became much more richer yeah it actually could showcase more of the raga yeah. so right. this way see there is uh, i mean the tradition will definitely it's a, it's a constant flux so there is no way that the tradition is going to be just the same but i think we need to be aware of what are the boundaries we have and how how are we going to sort of uh, uh, i mean stick to tradition yet uh, be our own self yeah, See, we, yeah. we should not lose our own identity Right. and when you the, when you told me how relevant is tradition to us definitely see without tradition in our lives for example even in our own lives if we if we don't have traditional values or in our art in music or dance if we don't have traditional values mm. we don't have an identity mm. the tradition actually defines us yeah tradition keeps us grounded keeps us simple and it actually helps us strive to achieve something more without tradition i think ego will set in and there will be a slow decay of the art and the personality so i think yeah. being traditional is very very important it's definitely very relevant to to practitioners to people not today but many years to come we need to have that tradition alive in us very important no, no absolutely uh, i'm just curious also you know when you talk about tradition and bani I'm just curious about one, like if you were to pick one, like core innate philosophy that the P.S. and Barney sort of, you know, ingrained in you, or something that you imbibed, then what would it be? Uh, see, um, I had learned from gurus uh, like Ara Keshavmurthy, who was a violinist and yeah. also used to sing, and um, I had learned from S. Rajam sir. Right. So there were. um in fact esrajam sir was a person who told me you should learn from ps and also because um the rigid that they had a sort of a system in notating songs in mm-hmm. rendering songs mm-hmm. so there was a method there's a very very be- beautiful approach in rendition of kriti so this was something which was not there for me See, because arar keshamurthy he used, used to sing a song in a particular way today tomorrow he'll sing in some other way because he was so creative mm-hmm. similarly rajam sir when he used to sing today uh, there may be th- uh, three sangatis tomorrow there will be five sangatis mm-hmm. and in on the stage there will be something else so there was no sort of uh, clarity in sort of how we are going to render this and uh, sing so it that that was beautiful but still this approach of learning uh, kriti the way it should be sung with a particular uh, def- clear definition of how the progression will be mm. that was an eye opener for me so that actually impacted me quite a lot the way of notating kritis mm. learning kritis presenting them in a particular mm. way if you look at all of all the students the many sing kritis it will all be the same because there is a method there will be small changes when we sing in our recitals it's not that when we sing in a recital yeah. we will definitely be on our own but if we sing together you will see that there is definitely unison so that is um, the beauty of this band yeah would you think that's also perhaps got to do with the fact that ps narayan sir was one of the most sought after teachers and therefore when you're a teacher um you're you're also always trying to see how you can kind of create framework syllabus that can easily i mean i'm just wondering i'm just thinking aloud i may be wrong but do you think he came from um, you know of course he was a performer but like also a very very sought after teacher and therefore would you think uh, that yeah i think uh, it is uh, it's not that he created a syllabus or anything like that but yeah. yes he was a wonderful teacher and he laid a lot of emphasis on learning a particular 
item well learn rendering manodharma in a particular manner so there was a method in uh, thing so he was very very clear in fact when we created um, the uh, the curriculum for eambalam hmm. um, he was on a panel and uh, okay. one of the panelists and there were a lot of wonderful inputs from his right. side yeah. as to how to practically help enable a student to uh, practice i mean uh, voice culture for example right for exa- uh, uh, even for senior, uh, senior students i mean practitioners who are learning doing ma- manodharma how do you improve manodharma for example how do you uh, put better swaras mm-hmm. kalpana swaras mm-hmm. how do you do better neraval mm-hmm. uh, so many ideas he could actually because that is only comes out of a lot of practical mm-hmm. knowledge i mean uh, being there and doing it for such a long time mm-hmm. there was a huge wisdom in his mind and that's that's how he could actually impart so i th- i think uh, that that really helped him in uh, shaping students that way yeah absolutely um i just want to ask you a little bit about you know as a teacher yourself i know that you have many students um uh, how 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 do you how much do you enjoy teaching you know as a performer uh, and as a teacher also i'm curious about what quality of your teacher have you sort of imbibed in a way that you sort of carry forward even even that aspect you know i love to teach i okay. love to be with my students i love to share with my students um because uh, that is something which uh, uh, comes very easily to me i mean i i don't know right from the beginning i used to love to interact with students and be able to share share with them so that is something which i do quite a lot uh, teaching yeah and um, what has helped me from my guru bsn uh, is the fact that how he is to for me what he did was he had so many students he could actually identify it's not that he always did a group class he did one to one class he used to yeah. you know, sing we used to sing together that is but he could identify the strengths and weaknesses of each student each of the students okay and he could then give in part training according to the strengths and weaknesses of students so right. he actually was very intelligent in that way whether it's a child whether it's an adult whether it's a, a i mean a female or male what are their uh, plus points how what how can that be uh, sort of taken to the oh, next yeah. level yeah. yeah so and he gave a lot of importance so that's what i i do with my students giving a lot of importance to the intuition see there is something which we need to intuition is something which we need to nurture hmm. so it's like a uh, muscle so basically we need to nurture it and try hmm. to think allow them to be on their own hmm. try to allow them to explore their own ideas be themselves hmm. the, the creativity the imagination which uh, goes into creativity so without restricting them in any way without actually telling them that you need to sing like this only hmm. we need to definitely allow them to be able to explore ultimately their own voice so this yeah. is what i learned from my guru and what i do with my students yeah right lovely um, you know um, uh, since so the better whenever i have had the opportunity of listen listening to your music i sort of found this quality of um, um um like like i don't know if there is a word like that but like gentle strength you know there's a quality of like um, there's a lot of silence and a lot of like uh, you know in the music itself even though you're singing there is a lot of there's a quality of silence in the music and i do remember that vishnu also talked about how you were you had played a crucial role in instilling in uh, him this quality of silence i want you to talk a little bit about the importance of silence and why um, especially now in the context of now where we are all uh, we're silent but we are not silent on our phones right i want you to talk a little bit about the importance of uh, silence for a creative artist yes see one thing is uh, i i recall the words always of rr keshavmurthy he used to he was 85 year old i was a seventh standard child at the time he used to say to uh-huh. always give importance to the silence between notes try to there is music in silence he says so that is so important there is music in silence it doesn't need to be filled everywhere with packed to end to end and uh, 
uh, all the explosives and uh, fire fireworks there has to be silence music needs to be savored with silence so that is that's the aspect of silence in music now coming to the fact of silence in artists mm. definitely not just artists i'm talking about as you told everyone is just uh, i mean uh, so occupied preoccupied intellectually there is not a silent moment i think we need to definitely Cut. silence the mind try to keep the mind blank as much as possible because it's very mm. important especially for artists yeah now, when the mind is calm and silence that's when creativity creativity just doesn't uh, come every time i mean it comes sometimes it, it comes and when it knocks yeah. it, it is very soft and very hissing if your mind is filled with all the chatter and all the intellectual uh, uh, yeah ideas ideas and uh, there is in that maze there is no space to actually accept the inspiration received from creativity so if an artist needs to be creative the mind needs to be absolutely calm and peaceful quiet quietness is very important uh, aspect mental important aspect for artists now how do we how do we get this quietness yeah that is again sadhana it is you need to sadhana is not just being practicing and dressing it's also practicing to remain silent trying to be having the mind sometimes just just watch it being silent consciously try to not clutter with lot of thoughts so this sadhana every day sadhana by artists by everyone definitely is important because without silence i think i mean uh, <laughs> no yeah absolutely i mean yeah they we're going to actually end up with lot a lot more problems yeah. physically mentally everything so do you do and music will not happen i mean huh? do you do that consciously the silence yes, yes. definitely your mind. i yeah i i definitely do not i try to keep uh, a, a distance from i a detachment so, so if there are something happening i try not to get uh, disturbed i i try to have a samasthiti what i say constantly because that is very important for me to be remain calm to remain listening and give that space to then understand what to do what not to do so i practice that definitely conscious that's fantastic i mean that's a very very valuable uh, take away even for uh, uh, young people who are listening to this or will listen to it later i don't think it's got anything to do with age as well i think everybody needs to sort of like you rightly said consciously cultivate um you definitely. know definitely it is it is possible to cultivate right? cultivate yeah initially yeah. it may be difficult but over a period of time i think there can be large periods of time when the mind is just still that is important absolutely <laughs> um uh, sir i'm just going to ask you a couple of questions more about what you have in store for this concert for road to psn that we are really really looking forward to and that premieres tomorrow at 6 pm i want to ask you a little bit about um, uh, you know uh, what can we expect yeah uh, <laughs> um, i think uh, what you can expect is something which will be very um i would say traditional music traditional music um something which has got a lot of silence as it has got a lot of uh, um uh, peaceful movements beautiful movements and this i have i have kept in mind thinking of psn sir because when i when i listen to his music he is always sticking to uh some core values which he has mm -hmm. he is not out there to sing he he when he renders some raga he is rendering it for the beauty of the raga for the for himself so i have selected compositions which are very dear to him the ragas which he would actually uh, sing in his concert the compositions which he would sing in his concert so that is what i have presented in this concert which you will hear tomorrow so we prepare to hear something which is very very sumpt sumptuous i would say sumptuous rich in uh, yeah. flavors um, if if you are looking for a lot of fireworks lot of uh, sing that will not be there <laughs> fantastic but you Lovely. definitely you definitely will get an i i uh, i mean uh, glimpse into 
what his music would be now i wouldn't say that see as i told you earlier when i spoke spoke as, as to how each of us have now found our own voice mm. yes i have found my own voice down the line mm. and i may not be exactly singing the way psn would mm. be psn sir ps narayan swami sir would be singing Correct. but definitely most of the the what what do i say the the principles the tenets whatever whatever we have see he has he has sung and that always remains in the mind so that when we render most of those aspects will be there but it will be in my own way right these these things no i it just comes out in a way where i am myself so right. i have rendered something which will remind you of ps narayan swami right and uh, yes so that is i have selected some compositions which were very dear to him which he would definitely sing during um, a concert and yes but even his tukdas we used to used to be very very uh, he, they would sing padams they used to mm. sing chavadis so okay. these are some things which are which you don't get to listen very regularly now regularly, as soon yeah. as uh, the main item is over people just switch off and then uh, they'll they'll go on to abhangs and uh, bhajans and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah it's not even i sing abans abans i i have grown up grown up in a bhajan paddhat bhajana paddhati i mean so, yeah. uh, south indian uh, bhajana paddhati i would sing all those bhajans abans but generally what i'm trying to say is that ps narayan swami sir's concerts you, or any of those ramnath krishnan kvm you could hear padams you could hear chavalis so i have selected some uh, i have selected a very beautiful padam uh, which i which is quite dear to me and uh, Uh, I, mean, uh, okay, <laughs> I should listen to it, but I don't want to give out everything. But <laughs> but yes, a wonderful padam which is very soul stirring, and which I feel strongly. I have uh, it very dear to me. And um, again, a javali which he generally sings very often in his concerts, very lilting javali. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, so these are the things which I've. presented so it's something which is very very uh, traditional fair which is going to be presented on the concert Lovely. tomorrow i Lovely. hope uh, all of you will definitely enjoy it yeah, i have enjoyed absolutely. singing it with the accompanists we had i had mathur shrinidhi on the violin and uh, right. hs sudindra we we three of us really enjoyed when we performed it i hope all of you also enjoy what you hear tomorrow yeah and hear I, I, tomorrow. i was just going to ask you like have you gotten used to performing without an audience um yes definitely i mean um, at one point you just switch off so whether the audience is there, there or, or the audience is not there it doesn't trouble you much uh, initially initial days it used to like when when we were growing up and we used to sing in the sabhas in chennai it used to be empty chairs so that was to trouble us yeah that is actually yeah <laughs> there's no one 50 people in that auditorium and but over a period of time all that just ceased so yeah. at one point you just start singing for yourself mm-hmm. for the music you need right. to get into the raga see if you do not get into the raga you the raga will not manifest yeah, so absolutely. for that you have to be there in that in the moment. moment yeah yes yes uh, we also yeah. have been enjoying um, all your uh, you know uh, the many things that you're doing very very interestingly on your instagram uh, handle as well so how has the whole um, you know the digital experience been for you like um, how are you liking instagram Yeah, actually, I am really loving uh, this uh, new phase of my life because uh, for almost ten to twelve years I was very silent. So I was not uh, actually active uh, on the social media handles right. because of my own preoccupations with uh, right. my music and yeah. work uh, in music. That is, I work yeah. for music. I'm <laughs> I, that's all I do. But uh, yes, um, this new sort of innings, which I would say, yeah. <laughs> uh, the social media innings, is quite exciting. I'm learning a lot of stuff because, especially Instagram, I had never knew about. I yeah. learned a lot of uh, new things about Instagram, and the joy is about sharing. See, yeah. I'm able to share. Like, uh, yeah. um, I started this music uh, and meditation that's series in the morning right. on Saturdays. Yeah, it is something. It's a pleasure because when I am sitting and practicing there and doing something, I am happy to share the music with others. I am yeah. happy to share the thoughts which are there in my mind, which come out of experience, which I like to share through readings. Or, um, I mean, I think definitely there is a lot to share, and this these platforms are great. I am really enjoying it. <laughs> That's fantastic. So are we. And um, yeah. in this, uh, I think it, it is this concert too that owed to PSN. 
is a sort of continuation of that spirit of sharing really uh, yes. to sort of yes in fact uh, i oh, sorry i uh, i forgot one thing in the spirit yeah. of sharing um, what people can expect you told right from the concert yeah. uh, i am also i have hand notated uh, the the comp the notations for all the songs which there are some rare compositions which i have sung which i told is very dear to me yes i mean from sir and including the padam and the javli i have hand notated all these songs and uh, this will be available for anyone who uh, i mean who uh, signs up get okay. the pass you signs up for the concert who wants to view yeah. the concerts these notations will be this will definitely be very beneficial not only for musicians but even dancers because one thing is see i i believe that music is very important for dancers also they need to feel the music they need to get into the music to be able to be able to do any more uh, justice in the dance right and also once they have firm notations and they are able to sing uh, share that with their musicians that will also help them in sort of getting authentic renditions for their own recitals so with that idea i want to just share uh, right. i mean that's what pc no. sir did that's, that's what i i yeah. intend to do yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> and indra ji says she li- likes the she loves the think about it series and for those who don't know what the think about it series is please head to tv ramprasad's instagram handle and do give it a follow and um, i think we're all here um, um on social media platforms in that same spirit to share and i think it's crucial that we um, like follow support um, each other um so i hope more more of you uh, tune into this conversation later tonight when you wake up and you're done with your puja and stuff and uh, do go and uh, head to the link in our bio and get your tickets and the concert is available for viewing until 18th october 6 am so do please take 90 minutes off to watch it thank you so much um, sir for uh, you know for this conversation Thanks, uh i've Thanks, really okay. been looking forward to it and thank you for um, you know the concert as well we're really looking forward to that as well thank you to everyone wonderful everybody. questions Enjoy. wonderful questions here yeah. i mean very uh, the questions that you put put across actually got me thinking so i mean i'm very happy to share because some of them some of these things are uh, hidden in our mind we don't, actually don't express it you don't are not able to share it i am okay. very happy that i could share all these thoughts with all of you i mean thank uh, you so much yeah. all right Take Have care. a good Take evening. Care. Have Bye-bye. a good night. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.